The Family Justice Courts has established three specialist divisions focusing on vulnerable parties. As specialised judges will hear cases involving youths, protection orders and maintenance orders. Now, there's also a new alternative dispute resolution service. One or more solutions like mediation and neutral evaluation can be applied to different aspects of a dispute. These are among efforts highlighted by Chief Justice Sundarish Menon to improve access to justice. In tandem with efforts to enhance access to justice, we are innovating our systems, processes and hardware and striving to foster an organizational culture in which our judges, judicial officers and court administrators are committed to securing the fair and efficient administration of justice for all users. Marking the opening of the new legal year, the Chief Justice also shared updates from a committee set up last year to look into ethics and professional standards. A survey found that only one in ten lawyers went through a structured mentorship program. Two-thirds felt that they could be better informed of the professional standards. If we are to successfully navigate the evolving landscape, bridging the generational gap between junior and senior practitioners will be essential for the profession's sustained vitality and renewal. Our profession has historically had a strong tradition of apprenticeship and for good reason. Watching and listening to one's mentors and role models and observing day-to-day decision-making are an essential part of learning the practice of law and catching the values of honesty, integrity and service. There are also efforts to help with the mental well-being of public prosecutors. The Attorney General's Chambers has established a team with its own in-house psychologist. Those handling cases involving the death penalty, for instance, are scheduled for mandatory visits. A team of AGC officers has also been trained as para-counsellors. They act as the first line of support when prosecutors face any traumatic incidents in the course of their work. Well, the Law Ministry is suggesting reforms for legal education here. They come from a team comprising experts across the judiciary, government and law schools. Suggestions include broadening what budding lawyers are taught and helping professionals keep up with global trends so Singapore remains a legal hub. Schools are advised to cover more civil law concepts used in other countries like China and Indonesia. This allows lawyers to better take on cross-border cases. Essential skills like accounting and data literacy will also help lawyers meet clients' needs. Another suggestion, compulsory internships for all law students. There are also recommendations to make sure even senior lawyers are guided in achieving new skills. Allied legal professionals should also get support to eventually practice law. Well, the legal industry says these recommendations come at a time when cases are becoming ever more complex. Institutions are already rolling out new initiatives to help professionals meet the industry's future needs. Asam Shah with more. The law school in the Singapore University of Social Sciences was set up to train more family and criminal lawyers. Its dean says legal work has now become interdisciplinary and requires a variety of skill sets. To help students adapt with the times, the school offers courses outside of law. So a lawyer must be able to understand more than just law. So, for example, I'm training our students in my law school uh, to learn social work because when they help families, they need to understand how social, sociology and social work and psychology works. So I think it's a mindset change. As for practicing lawyers, Singapore Academy of Law members will now receive $250 per year to further their knowledge, up from $35. They can use the funds to attend conferences, access e-books and conduct legal research. The Academy says this will help members keep up with the latest trends in the industry. 
a legal services need to also follow our business owners, right, and, and to be able to support them as they go into the region. So that's one trend that's going to pick up pace much more quickly than before. Second, of course, is actually um, a technology like generative AI making its way into law offices. So that has an impact on uh, training lawyers, not only to know how to use these tools, but also it also affects the way lawyers are trained. The industry players expect to see the effects of these recommendations after five years. They say the effort will be worthwhile as it ensures Singaporeans continue to get access to high-quality legal advice.